September. 105. All right, Mike. Well, I guess we're going to do the flea market. Yes, next weekend. Next Sunday. Uh, I guess not. I'm gonna get up early in the morning, so I'm not. Oh. I'll need recovery time from this Saturday anyway. I'm not used to staying up late anymore. We haven't done this in a while. Because if it was tomorrow, it would be six hours from now, four hours from now. <laughs> that wouldn't work out too good for me. <laughs> Collapse over a table of crap snoring. <laughs> All right, Mike. Till next weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Uh. Oh, oh shit. Hold on. I don't know if I can carry all that. Me. See if they'll fit in there. Where does all come from? Scratch pads for the old man. He's always looking for shit to write on. Okay. Two in the car. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Nice, yeah. It was Halloween Florida. Mm -hmm. It will be soon enough, Scott. Enjoy it while we have it. These are the last few days of some, we've already had a taste. It was nasty and humid all week. I even smell the wood smoke out here. Somebody's got a fire going. With the damn tools again. <laughs> do you do this on purpose? I can't imagine no, you I drive the little ladies around like this. Are you running like a out of the trunk tool market or something? <laughs> you know, with the, to the illegals or some shit like that? No. Not at all. Why would all the fucking tools? No, I know just, you don't use tools. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm turning in and replacing. Uh, some of the older tools that I had. <laughs> what, for two years? That's a lot of tools. Well, no, they're, you know, uh, all these old... And some of them don't even exist anymore. Oh, yeah. Needs change. Tool styles, Well, cars. the thing is, with Craftsman, they're always uh, replacing... Not replacing. Upgrading. Yeah, and then there's, like, uh, the latest, and then, you know, and then I've seen tools from three, four years ago. Here's a brand new tool, and they don't exist anymore. They're always... <laughs> You know, yeah. the, the basic shit never changes. No. But they give you credit for, uh, you know, like say there's some tool that don't exist and it was originally worth $20, $18, you get an $18 gift card. Mm. No, I'm just going through and uh, some things are old, worn. And yeah, you're right, I'm not using them. No, you have Mike fix your car. With all that Bosey's education wasted. I didn't say wasted. Well, if it wasn't, you'd be able to fix your own light bulbs. What the hell, somebody walking on the fucking road? Yeah. Guess where I saw the worst driving in Florida? Oh, well. it, wasn't, it wasn't the old ladies either. Huh. God almighty. A lot of bad driving down there. A lot. Well, actually, eBay's been rather busy. Well, that's good. How much stuff are you selling? Oh, shit, I'm, I'm approaching the 600 sales mark. 
I'm averaging between 40 to 50 sales a month, which is down from when the Kisco shit was on, which was as a high of 80. But that was insane. I was packing eight, nine boxes a day. It was just fucking crazy. What would the postman say when he came around? Nothing. He's happy for it. Basically, he told us to save his job. What? Because then you know, it's a short route, and then we're going to eliminate it, and fold it into another route. And, but all these damn boxes we've been sending out, they, they need them on there, so. <laughs> Every day it's a package pickup. Every day. So he said, keep that up as well. And now I'm selling my shit too. So that adds to it. So it's coming and going. No, it's mostly going because I'm selling my crap also along with his. Two different, two different eBay accounts, both, you know, sell it. My shit doesn't sell anywhere near as fast as the stuff at the shop, but I still manage one or two a week. Because I gotta empty out that fucking big trailer. I got full of shit because the fucking roof is leaking everywhere. I bought a fucking RV to store this shit in. I tried to get a box truck, and they want insane money for rusted old fucking crap. And fuck you, I ain't paying that kind of cash for a piece of shit. I'll never be able to fucking sell. So I fucking figured an RV is the same basic idea. A fucking big box on wheels. Just ignore the stove and the countertops and shit like that, and you still got plenty of room for storage, and sure enough. It's like the only problem dealing on Craigslist. You message these people, they'll get back to you. Boy, they jerk you around. I, was oh. talk, I almost had a 76 Dodge. Almost. Nice one. 42,000 miles. What kind? Spa, uh, a Midas. It's a, it's a mini motorhome, a little one, on a van chassis. And a fucking guy, I, I get a hold of him, I tell him I'm interested in buying it. I said, uh, you know, he's uh, one of these, uh, you turn it in for charity and we sell it type places. Oh, okay. I see the pictures, it needs a couple tires. He says it's not running. And I, you know, I said, uh, where is it? It's in Walden. I said, is it dry outside? Yes. Structurally sound? Yes. Runs. It will when we replace the carburetor. We'll, he says, we'll replace the carburetor, we'll pump up the tires, we'll drive it right down to you. I told him, I'm, I'm down here in Brewster, you know, where I was, was you know, he knew our place. And I said, okay, I'll. He says, he says, he'll call me back the next day. I wait. Nothing. Another day goes by. Finally, I call him. Oh, yeah, we're, we're waiting for a carburetor to come up from, uh, uh, where did he say, Monticello or wherever the fuck he ordered from. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. All right. Nothing. No fucking phone call at all. So, you know, and I met his price. He wanted 15 for it. And I said, fine, I'll give you 1500 for it. It's worth that, even in scrap. Can't go wrong. Day or two go by, finally I call him back again. Oh, well, I gotta get my guy to put it on. It's all right. You call me then. Week goes by, nothing. So finally I said, fuck you. Back to the fucking drawing board. Shit. <laughs> I spot an 87 Tioga. Pay a uh, Fleetwood Tioga Arrow. The little one, same exact size as the Dodge. Guy's got a whole list of new parts. He's got a brand new fucking engine in the damn thing. He's got all this, he's got that. Looks pretty good to pictures. I, I, no number in there, so I had to fucking... Again, I said, well, okay. I left a fucking message you know, through, through Craigslist. Figured that's the last time I'm ever going to fucking hear of that. Right away, I get back an email. Wow, that's never happened before. With a phone number. Call Mike at... Bup, 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 up in uh, Millbrook. Was it Millbrook? Yeah, Millbrook, I think it was. Right up here? Yeah, it's up here. I call talking. him right away. I get him. He's at work. He works down in Westchester somewhere. And I said, well, I'd like to talk to you about uh, your motorhome. He tells me all the shit he did to it. He reconstructed the whole fucking over cab over part because it was rotted. He put all new wood, all of this. New engine, new new carburetor and intake manifold setup, a new alternate starter, blah, 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 blah. All this new, seven fucking new tires. Seven. Big fucking, you know, 16.5s, and that's expensive as hell. And uh, he wants 45. I get him down to four. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, if it's what you say, you drive it down here, we got a deal. He knows us, he's bought parts from us before, and right away he said, uh, drive it down. I said, no, I'm going to PayPal you a deposit, $600 fucking dollars deposit, before you ever move that thing out of the driveway. Just show him, not, not bullshit, no Craigslist stupidity. Sends his wife to fucking, not his wife, but his fucking daughter, whatever the fuck it was, the money. Right away, drove it down, deal done, got it right there, it was exactly what he said it was, actually it was better than he said it was. You know, I looked it over, all the new parts, still whatever there. He's got about 10 Gs into it. Wow. Well, I, I guess it was a situation where he built, he got it somewhere with a bad engine. He put a new engine in it, did a lot of work to it, fixed it all up. He wanted to take his kid on hunting trips and fishing trips. I guess there was a falling out with the wife. I didn't ask for the grisly details, but he did drop some hints like, 
you know, uh, well, it's up where the wife lives, not where I live, no, up where the wife lives, and uh, she wants it out of there as soon as possible. So, well, as soon as possible, it could be today if we come to it up the deal. You know? So now it's down there, and I'm already loaded. What year is this? 87. So, and how much has he got into it? 10 grand? He said 10 grand, and I do believe him. Ugh. The motor alone is three. That's just the engine. So, what are you paying for it? I paid him four thousand dollars for it. What's it worth in scrap as it is? Actually, book is fifty-five. Actually, fifty-six. That's uh, NADA book value is fifty-six hundred dollars. So he's he's got to move it. It's already at my place. I got it already. Ah. That's that. He drove it down right away. What's the you colors? Uh, Tayoga. They were uh, beige and beige, uh, bronze yeah. striped on the side. The, those are Fleetwood colors. My Bounder is exactly the same colors. It's got a Chevy van front nose. It's absolutely rust free. There's no no rust at all around the wheel wells, around the fucking doors, anywhere. Underneath is clean as a fucking whistle. It's got the original goddamn exhaust in it. And uh, it comes from Arizona or California. We had tags for Arizona and California on the side of it. So it must have spent most of its life out west. Oh. And it was clean. Hmm. Didn't look like a homeless person had been in there for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was clean. It didn't smell funny. Nothing. No really New nice. York salt. No, apparently not. Well, you know what? RVs don't really get used in winter, very rarely. You know, they're, they're mostly summertime. People just don't, for one thing, they're not really... Mine has the Arctic package. In the 80s, that was pretty much unheard of. And even today, when you buy a small Class C, you're not getting the Arctic package, not like that. Those are weekenders. You know, nobody full-time's in the Class C, really. Not on 21 footer anyway. Unless they're desperate. I like all those bumper stickers on your Corsair. <laughs> Oh, all yeah. Place, all the places it went. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's right. That reminded me of a, like a luggage with all yeah. the stickers on it. Surprisingly, this RV has exactly one bumper sticker on it. Just one. On the whole RV. So basically, it's just a glorified large van. That's all it really is. It's just a van with a camper body stuck on the back. So all the eBay stuff is going to go in here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I take stuff out, I have to sort what's in the fucking Barker's trailer. It's 25 years worth of shit in there. <laughs> What's garbage, I'm going to throw the fuck out. A lot of it got ruined by water. That's what isn't? Bad. Yeah, it is, because you know those cars I was buying up there at fucking Rhinebeck? Uh-huh. A lot of them got water damage oh, on the box. Oh, that's too bad. Fortunately, it was only the boxes. The cars inside were fine. And I already sold a couple of them for big fucking money on eBay. Big money. How many cars do you think really got damaged? Oh, probably about 20 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but still, the, the one... Remember that ugly-looking thing called the car that I bought? The car. It was from a 70s movie about that shit. Uh, the Lincoln Mark IV, Mark III. No, that was the, big, the, 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 the prequel to Christine, right? Yes. Yeah, well, not really, well, but no, it was well, along yeah, the same yeah. lines. Yeah, the car. And I had the, that yeah. one. That one miraculously escaped water damage. Somebody out in California paid me 200 bucks for it. I paid 20 Where'd that come from? Rhinebeck? Rhinebeck. Back <laughs> when you could still buy stuff you know, for under $30. Now they're fucking crazy. 80 90 100 Fuck yes. you. I ain't paying that kind of fucking money. That's ridiculous. Uh, another one, the, uh, the Ectomobile was like 110, 120, something like that. Oh, the Ghostbusters? Yeah. The Knight Rider car also pretty had slight water damage. That was another 200 dollars one. Yeah. So basically, I've already paid for half this, this truck from eBay. Just selling crap that was in there. I sold a couple fucking parts Victrolas I had in there that got water, a little bit of water damage on them. But they were just parts machines. The good ones are inside for me. But I still got like six more out there to so, sell. You know, what I'm gonna do is, you know, they'll go down to the shop, they'll be weighed up, photographed, listed on eBay, boxed, labeled, and then put in there. And as they sell, they come out of there and they get labeled and go to the mailman. I wonder if that trailer came from the closet when Barker's closed. Yes, it did. Oh, yeah? That's exactly where it came from. That one and the other one that's all full of radios and shit that I'm selling for the old man. How are the radios selling out of there? Very good, very well. Some of them, some of them have sold for serious money. How do you know what to, uh, price to put on them? Easy, research. You ask the internet, you ask eBay. What have these sold for in the past? Aha, that's what people are getting for them? Pretty good indicator. <laughs> and some of them is just plain common sense. You know, if you see an AM FM radio from 1968, that's gonna be pretty fucking rare because there weren't that many FM stations in 1968. It was a rare option. Most people wouldn't have gotten it. So that kind of stuff is what gets the, the most money. All the fucking time. It's all it's always good stuff. the most expensive radio you sold. Holy shit. I think I sold a Blaupunkt. 
which came probably from an early Mercedes and BMW. That one went for almost 300 bucks. From the 80s? No, the 60s. Wow. Might even in Porsche. Excuse me, Porsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so essentially, the entire fucking RV is going to be paid for by this shit from eBay. And I'll be, you know, won't cost me nothing out of my pocket in the end. I anticipate by the end of the summer that extra 2000 bucks will be made up. And when I'm done with it and everything's sold, I'll turn around and sell that too. Yeah. I've already got a guy who wants to buy it. He, no, he didn't want to buy it. He wanted to trade me. He wanted to trade me a 33 foot long Fleetwood Bounder, like an 89 or 88. Basically, just like mine, but 10, 12 years older. As I already got a fucking huge you know, thing that I'm full timing it, I don't need two. I need something small that I can run back and forth in a shop with, with all these fucking packages. I don't have to, you know, I'm not doing that with a gigantic bus. I tried to buy a fucking school bus. They want too much goddamn money. Hmm. So what are you fucking crazy? I'm not giving you $6,000 for a fucking uh, glorified uh, wheelchair van with 200,000 miles on it. Get the fuck out of here. What's going to happen to the Barker's trailer once it's all empty? We're going to tar the roof and use it to store something else. Oh, yeah? Shit for the yards. Well, I shouldn't have let that, you know, the problem is I let it go too long. I, I should have left that stuff in there. Should have just sold it a long time ago. But then I would have lost some money. I'm making good money on it now. Hmm. It's all shit that I put away to sell it one day. Well, one day is now. Hmm. Even in the bad economy, the stuff's selling. Yeah. Yeah. 200 bucks for a fucking toy car. Yeah. You, you bet. And I had a Danbury Mint one I put on there. It was badly water damaged. Get back complaints. Oh, it smells like mold. No shit. Well, you put right up on there, right? Water damage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It showed good pictures of it, too. All well, what, what was the car? I was a Budweiser beer truck. Mm. 1938 Budweiser beer truck, which I spent good money on years ago. But I had to give him some money back. I said, fuck, take $20 back. The hell with it. So what'd you pay for it back in the day? Oh, fuck, probably 100 Oh. Yeah, well, it was destroyed by the water. That one, the water got into it. Just so that was like mint in its box? I would have got about 100 At least got my money back or probably more. Mm. Now, there are some that weren't water damaged, and those ones I'm going to sell, too because I don't want to keep around long enough to get one. Now's the time to get rid of them now. I can get some money for them. Mm. Now, I keep the ones that I want, like Christine and, you know, the Dukes of Hazard car, stuff like that, and just get rid of the other ones. Well, there, I got that black one was missing an antenna, right? Which black one? The black uh, 58 Plymouth. Black 58 Plymouth? You or a tan a one. Did I didn't give you a tan one? Oh, you might have. Yeah, yeah it was missing. So it was missing an antenna. Yeah. I wonder what I did with that. I have that somewhere. Those, I, I wouldn't be... Actually, that's not true. I did have a bunch of them that were loose from the boxes that I bought many, many years ago. I used to use them as decorations under the Christmas tree. Mm. Those ones, I filled up a box with it, and it went to Norway. Some guy in Norway gave me 100 bucks for it. That's, for whole, yeah. yeah, just a box. Some of them were broken. Some for parts, that kind of thing. So is that right? You want to ship that all the way to Norway? Go ahead. Besides uh, Stanberry Mint, what well, are the other name makers of the... Mateso, uh, Road King, stuff like that. Road King, that's, that's, yeah. Signature Series, you know, there's a bunch of them. The ones he bought for Mames when they were going out of business? Those, I don't really remember what the... I sold one of those. I did one of those, yeah, I went to Canada. Hmm. I don't remember which one it was, but I know it went to Canada. But those are not expensive ones. You know, they're 20 dollars not the big money. Yeah, I had a bunch of those down at that flea market in Daytona. Yeah. I almost bought, well, I didn't almost buy the guy. The asshole never got back to me. I saw a 77 Avion. Hmm. That's basically it's a Dodge chassis with a very, uh, like an Airstream. It was all aluminum, riveted aluminum body on it. Nice body on it. You know, and uh, from the outside and the distance, the one picture the guy had looked pretty good. I seen it when we came back from Rhinebeck. I immediately messaged the guy. Nothing. Day two, three, four, five. Nothing back. Fuck you, you know. I messaged you two hours after you listed it. Don't tell me you sold it in two fucking hours. You know, I don't believe you did that. You just you just either bullshitting me. Finally, after about a week and a half, I see all of a sudden there's a bunch more pictures in there. Huh? I thought that was sold. Look in there. There's a bit more of a description. Turns out that, you know, it's it's been around. It's got 70 some odd thousand miles. You know, the owner drove it all over the country. It's been sitting and it smells a little slightly mist, musty inside. Hmm. 
I looked at the pictures, blew them up on the screen. Look at him. This thing looked like a mentally deranged hoarder homeless person that had been God. living here for years. I mean, we're talking, I could smell it through the pictures. Yeah. So you know, and I, I looked at this and I said, what are you fucking, now I'm glad you stupid motherfucker you didn't get back to me. Mm -hmm. You know, good, fuck you if you do. I didn't even answer that email, but never did. Which I do not understand. You, the only way you can, if you don't leave your number or your email address in the actual listing, or let, e let Craigslist post it, how do you expect people, your customers to get a hold of you? They're gonna send you an email. If you don't answer them, you're not gonna sell your product. You know? And it's not just like one person did this, it's like 10. They don't get back to you. All right, maybe one or two might have been sold and the assholes just don't take the listings down. <clears throat> but the rest of them, you know, what the hell is their fucking excuse? I really didn't want to spend $4,000. I wanted to spend 15, maybe 200, 2,000. But when I saw what he had, you know, it's nice. I know I could move it because class, that particular short camper, they're very popular. And he put so much fucking money in it that, you know. You're not going to, he, yeah, he'll never recoup that. He knows that. He knew that right away. He told me right off, he said, I got 10 grand in this thing. I got to get something, I got to get something back. I got to get something back. It's all right. You know? I understand that. I know what a fucking GM crate motor goes for. Brand new fucking Holly carburetor on there. Holy shit. And it's a carbureted oh, yeah, engine. 9333, three, three. I got all threes. 93,000. All threes. Well, almost all threes. Let's see if I get a screenshot of that, but I don't think I can. Oops. <laughs> can you get it? Uh, I'm trying to, I lost the fucking picture. Damn it. What the hell happened? Oh, not in the right place. I don't want to don't lose it when you... Oh. Shit, what the hell's going on here? Where the hell's the goddamn gauge? <laughs> no. There, uh. Come on, focus in. Okay, we got it. Still picture and video. All right. Oh, you got a picture and a video? Yeah. yeah. Well, the video was going at the same time. I took a screenshot. Got all threes, well, <laughs> nine, three, three, three. Pretty soon, be a hundred thousand. Well, no miles went on it for a month, so. Yeah. Now I'm waiting for that guy with the Dodge to get back to me. If he does, it's been a week, he hasn't, so I don't, I'm not holding my breath. Do you still want that one, too? No, I'm just waiting for him to get back. You know what? I would still take it. For 1500 it is actually worth it. It's 42,000 miles on it. Hmm. But I don't expect he's ever going to get back to me anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, if I, if I got that one for 1500 bucks, I would immediately take care of selling the other one to James for, you know, what I got into it. I'm not going to trade him for his goddamn bus, but I know he'll keep come up with the money. It may take him a month, it may take him two, but he'll come up with the money because he's bought like 10, no, more than 10 cars from us. Christ, he just bought the cars the convertible. I know somebody who bought a Grey, an old Greyhound bus from 1987. Yeah, that's way too big for me. No, no, he ain't selling it. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's a junk shop up in uh, Waterbury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So of course, all week they were getting because it said Syracuse up on the thing there. Uh -huh. you know, so of course, when I came in, I said, "Can I make a bus joke?" And he goes, "No." <laughs> said, Everybody's been coming in saying, "How much? How much for a one-way ticket to Syracuse?" And he's all these uh, fucking yeah. jokes. When's the bus leave? <laughs> <laughs> gonna get all these bus jokes, but uh, yeah. no, they 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 fill. They go to uh, what do you call it? flea markets with it. Good idea. And then they said, so how's it working? Out? I said we're selling. Best of all, this little RV, believe it or not, has a generator. My own end, which is a fucking two thousand dollar option of those things. And you very very rarely see a small RV like that with a generator. That, that you almost never see that. Generally, they got to be at least 26, 27 feet long when they put a generator in it. Not 21 footers. And that fucker works. Fire right up. When you and Mike went up to go buy your camper, did they have used stuff up there? Or was all was new? No, no, that was a private individual I bought it from. I bought that off a family. Uh, his name was Sean Cassidy, believe it or not. Hmm. Same as the, the actor. Somebody, and Ian Hobax, a friend of Ian Hobax. He didn't know, didn't know that until I got up there, but. Yeah. 
poles are atrocious this year. Uh-huh. Oh, look at the winter we had. Mm. Mike said this was the most that he used his pellet stove. I guess. That was a bad, bad winter. It was very, very cold. He burnt three tons or more. Used a little RV for some experimenting I need to do on the roof. Hmm. I bought a bunch of new, you know, every couple years you gotta get up there and Tart. seal up any cracks and stuff like that and just go over to fucking. What about that flex seal in a can that I Well, that, that's what I bought. That's one of the things I bought. I bought flex seal, both the squeeze bottle and in the can. And I'm gonna squeeze the bottle for around the windows on the sides because it can't spray there. And the can for the roof, I wanna see how it works on the little one before I put it on the big one. What about a uh, paint roller and a can of tar? No, you don't put tar in an RV. They have a special stuff. It's liquid roof in a can. It's, a, it's a, some kind of polymer that's identical material to what's actually on there already. I have a rubber roof in my RV. It's the same exact company makes it as the rubber roof. It's their stuff. You know, it's made to literally, they guarantee the roof for 20 years if you apply it over your existing rubber roof to extend the life another 20 years. So I'm going to inspect it up there. If it looks like it needs it, I'll get some cans and put it on there. I have a can coming that I'm going to just use around the big openings and shit to make sure they stay nice and sealed up. I don't think I have to do the whole thing yet. But you have to stay on top of that kind of thing with an RV and Mike won't be his ladder. I got it down there now. Otherwise you're going to have leaks and that leads to a very expensive water damage. Mm, well, what about the markers, Tor? How are you going to fix that? Tar. Oh, that's going to be tar in a paint roller. Yes, because that's a stationary thing. It's not going anywhere. You know, it doesn't require any kind of special treatment. It's just, a, that's just sheet aluminum, you know. Just tar up the fucking halls and that when it's... Can I do that in the middle of August? Don't know when, but I'm not doing it at all. He'll hire someone to do that. I'm not going up there with a fucking tar bucket. <laughs> shit like that. What's my shit is out of there. I really don't care if it fucking leaks. Dodge RV, I figured, you know, even if it's a complete piece of shit, and I end up just, you know, junking it in the end, I know exactly where I get rid of a 42,000 mile 360 Chrysler engine. <laughs> you know, probably a four barrel, no less. I know exactly where that could go. There's one guy that would always take that kind of stuff and find a use for it. 727 transmission, the fucking Dana Dooley rear. And there's a Risk trade out there in vintage RV items like lights and little stoves and fucking just stuff like that because I guess people do restore them and they need those fixtures. on Chicky. No, I have never. I would be the last person to really hear anything about him. Though. But I guess uh, somebody said about a month ago he was walking around, so. That was Mike. Hmm. Not me, I didn't see him. Well, I know my eye. I know he didn't. He's not anything new. No? 